All right, guys, it's Jessmon time. Let's go. For real. I was going to do Machine Drummon this week, but I'm still waiting for my Machine Drummons. And I can't do the deck profile without them. So we're doing BT7 Jessmon. The reason I wanted to start off by BT7 deck profiles of Jessmon is because I think it's one of the best decks in the format. If you think about it, Jessmon did really well in Japan, even though it was best of one. Whatever, okay. But they had to fight through multiple ice walls, reinforced memory boosts, MDFs. And those are all banned or at one here, which means that Jessmon, untouched, should do fine. It really should. I have been testing this deck quite a bit. I am very impressed with the results. I can even upload some gameplay footage, maybe, if you guys like the video enough. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. So I'll explain my deck choices. I'll explain what new cards from BT7 we're playing. I'll explain why I'm playing them and why I think the deck is really good. If you guys appreciate the content, just don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you think, subscribe, turn the notification bell to smash potatoes. That way you know when all these amazing new videos come out. All right, always the babies first. Four Demi Marimon from BT6. We're only running the four eggs because Dressmon still either wins really quick or loses really quick. And this is the most consistent egg for the job, attacking player plus 1,000. That's it. It's not once per turn, so if you attack a player twice with Dressmon, you gain the 1,000 twice, which is really cool. That's all we need for eggs again because it's going to be really fast. So that's it. That's good. Time for the rookies. So we're playing four of the new Huckmon. Yes, these are proxies. No, I don't have BT7 cards. Please don't ask me. <laughs> for real though. So this BT7 Huckmon has an inheritable when attacking once per turn that says, real top five cards of your deck, add all sister mons to your hand. That's really broken because adding multiple sister mons, it's really strong. Now, of course, we also play four of the regular Huckmon, the one that says on play, reveal top five, and then add two Huckmon sisters, dress mon to your hand, whatever. Uh, you still need this one. It's the only rookie you really don't want to evolve if you don't have to. So we play four of it. Hopefully you play it and resolve it a bunch. Hopefully you always get two. Then we play four Gilmon on deletion. Once per turn, draw a card. When something's deleted, on your side of the field. Really, really strong card. Helps you get draw power in the deck. It's the most consistent form of draw power right now, but in red for the inheritable for the deck. We were playing Biomon in EX01, but it's not completely necessary now. Uh, we have lots of cards in our rookie lineup that do deck thin. So it's kind of okay. Gilmon is just the best card for the job based on what it does. And our 13th rookie in red is one Agumon from the Yamamon's third deck when attacking a player plus 2,000 DP for the turn. Again, it doesn't stack like the Demi Mara. It's not once per turn, so it does stack. That's what I meant to say. So yeah, the Agumon there is the 13th rookie. It's the flex spot, really. I've thought about making this other rookies. I've thought about maybe making it another champion, which we'll see in a second. But um, at the end of the day, there are hands where this was the only rookie in my hand. So like if I drew a champion instead, like, it'd be really fucking bad. So, we're playing the one Akamon. That's it for the red rookies, but we do have Sistermon rookies. We do play four Blanc. On play, draw a card, and it's a blocker if you control Akamon or Dressmon, which is really good. And now, our newest addition, the Sistermon lineup from BT7 to Sistermon Block Awaken. Again, they're proxies. So, this card is really cool. You can evolve it on top of Sistermon for a blog for two, which is kind of cool. But more importantly, it's its own playability. When you play it, you can attach a sister mon, turn it to a digivolution source from the hand or trash. If you do, you recover one. So it gives just mon and the sister mon package as a whole actual recovery power, which is really good because it helps you stay alive a little bit longer. And that does actually matter. It has come up for me in testing. And then in on deletion, if it has a sister mon blanc and its sources, you add back a sister mon from your trash to hand or a huck mon or a just mon. Anything except sister mon blanc awakened which is kind of insane. So it gives you some toolboxing from the trash and some recovering of your resources, which could come up if you're playing a bit of a slower game, but it's a really good card. Honestly, two of it, you don't want to draw multiples of it, to be honest. And sometimes if it's like it's your only system on hand, it feels really bad. But besides that, it's a really good card. Honestly, two of it's the perfect number for me. So that does leave us with 19 rookies in the deck. Uh, it's perfectly fine. 13 red ones, all you need. Uh, you don't brick as much on rookies right now, which is good. So champion lineup. We are playing right now for Bauhawkmon, the one unheritable attacking once per turn. If you have a sister mom, pop something 5,000 or less. Really, really strong inheritable ability. Still in this format. A lot of hybrids, uh, you know, and a lot of creatures this format will have 5,000. So that's just really good. We're playing three gray mon from the starter deck um security plus one inheritable now i gotta be real i've been thinking about playing four and four 
because the extra security does really come up sometimes. Sometimes it allows you to just go for a game. Instead of playing a bit of a slower game where you're attacking security, hitting in tamers, and it feels really bad. If you attack security and hit tamers, but you end the game that turn, then it's fine. And Greymon helps you with that. So I'm really, really considering playing a fourth one. I'm not sure what to drop. It might be the Agumon, to be honest, or it might be something else. I have no idea right now. But um, I'm, I'm seeing champions consistently enough, and we're still we still got a little bit to go, so it's okay. The final two red champions are Goonimons. Uh, because we are playing a bit of a tamer count, it is a hybrid. You can evolve on tamer and win if you need to. That's what it's there for. And the final two champions of the deck are our white Sistermon CLs. Now, this is a really good Sistermon. It gives you plus one memory when you play it, and then all turns plus 2,000 to your Hakumon and Justmon, or Royal Knights, sorry. Now, we're not playing Ciel Awakened. Ciel Awakened basically has the same kind of condition as Blanc Awakened, the same graveyard ability, Unleashing ability, but when you play a Ciel Awakened, if you attach a Ciel to it, to its sources, you can pop something level 5 or less, I think. Um, the reason why I'm not playing that card is because Balhawk can pop most of that stuff anyway, and if you really need to pop a level 5 or something, you just attack attack it with like Dungeon of the Blade or something. Or usually just end the game, it doesn't really matter. So, Ciel Awakened hasn't done a lot for me, so I'm not playing it at all. Um, but I am playing 8 Sister Mons total in the deck, which is a little bit excessive, I think, in my opinion. I'm thinking about cutting the Sister Mon package down to one less Sister Mon, and if I do that, I might play the fourth uh, Grey Mon instead. Um, but yeah, that's it for the level 4 lineup. I think it's perfectly fine right now, except for I really do want a fourth Grey Mon in the deck. I just don't know what to play right now, but it's okay. It's okay. Ultimates, we're playing, of course, the four Savior Huckmon, because don't forget, in BT7 format, for us, it will be at four, not at one. So, Digivolving plays Hustamon for free from hand is really good, and of course, the Inheritable, Unsuspended Adjustment once per turn, very, very strong. We are playing a fifth level five in the form of War Growlmon from the Gallimon starter deck. I just think it's one of the best backup level fives in the deck, and like you can access, to be honest. You know, when you're attacking, you delete something small, and then that makes it kind of a mini moss monster, especially with Greymon as the Inheritable. Really, really good. And sometimes even if you can set up like a Sistermon and play and have this as Inheritable, this attacks, it pops two small things. That does happen. It does come up. It's really strong. Of course, as Inheritable once per turn, gain security plus one if a Mall Stage 1 is deleted. So it does kind of let you go for extra damage sometimes, which does close out the game. It does. It really does. That's it though for the ultimates. Just the five. Uh, I haven't, like sometimes obviously you don't draw ultimates. But the only thing I would change is that a sixth, like a sixth, another one of this. So if you guys think that's important, you should definitely do it. But for now, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. This deck does play Champion Rush really well. So having the ultimate, it's obviously what you want to see. You really want to see it. If you draw your line, you win. So keep that in mind. And speaking of drawing the line, we of course have four of our big boss monster, Justmon himself. When attacking, you can play a Digimon card, a Sister Mon from your hand or trash for free. And then once per turn, when you play something, this gets 3,000 piercing. So it's just a big boss monster that can hopefully attack twice because of Savior, and it's just doing a lot, a lot of ignorant things. The one attacking ability to play a Sister Mon is not once per turn, so it's incredibly busted, and we're playing four of it because this is the only one you want to see. We're not playing any level sixes, it's just just Mon or bust. If you draw your line, you probably win the game. For our final Digimon on the deck, we are playing one Blitz Omnimon, because it is a win button. It does let you win uh, with Jessmon for game, which is really cool. And it's also good against decks that play options that aren't Wyvern's Breath, basically. Um, Wyvern's Breath will be pretty common because of yellow in the format. It might justify dropping this card completely, but sometimes, you know, what you can do, you can't Aguni for game if you have zero or one memory, but you can Blitz Omni for game if you have zero or one memory. So there is still one in the deck. I think it's still justified as one of in the deck. Uh, not two of, not anything crazy like that, but I think one is fine just to close out the game. That's really cool. For the Tamers, we're just playing the three Tai Kamiya from BT1, giving your stack security plus one if you go all the way. That helps you really close out the game with the Justmon, and of course, it's your memory Tamer. That's it for Tamers in the deck, just the three, it's all you need. The rest of our deck, Options. We're playing two red memory boost. Now, back in the day, back in the day, last format, um, I played four of this card in my deck. The reason I played four is because there wasn't a lot of consistency cards in the deck, and it, you, it was a struggle to get to your pieces. However, thanks to a new inheritable Huck mod, we have another way to search Digimon from the top five cards of our deck, and it actually adds sister mods, which is really good. But like, you can get an inherit like really cool plays that I would do. Which is why I only need two at memory boost because the deck is actually being like super freaking consistent. But let's say you have these 
and you have uh, Huckmon in hand, whatever. So you promote, you have this, you swing. If you add some Sistermons with this Huckmon, then you can just play a Huckmon from your hand and not add Sistermons. That was one of the problems last format, which really didn't help its consistency. You only had one real way to get cards in the deck besides Memory Boost, which didn't add Sistermons. And that was the way. Now you might be saying, yo, this only adds Sistermons, but it adds all the Sistermons. It's not just a one Sistermon grab. Sometimes it is, but like, I've grabbed three. It's insane. And then when you have Sistermons, then your Huckmons can actually grab you your other pieces, because sometimes you have to fight for between Sistermons or Huckmon or Justmon pieces. But now you don't have to, not really, not if you have both cards. And it does happen, and it does help the consistency of the deck a lot. So we are playing two red memory boosts because of it, and the delay does come up, we're not gonna lie. But the memory, the, the format is still full of memory blockers, so be careful. We're doing two Judgment of the Blade, because attacking on Spend Digimon One is pretty broken. And of course, in security, it does add, um, you know, let's play a system on for free. That's pretty good. We're playing one Delicate Plan because it's a win button that doesn't trigger options, pretty busted. We're playing one Gravity Crush because sometimes the extra two memory does let you win the game. Uh, you only really save it for the end game. Uh, rarely, very, 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 very rarely do I not activate this card the last turn of the game. Sometimes it works out. Usually it does, but like usually save for the end and you're fine. The final option is one Gaia Force. Just to have that little bit of removal, it does just delete really big things in the format, which will exist, and Guy of Force is just there to help you out. That's it for the deck profile. Uh, closing thoughts. That's it. That's just Mon. Uh, what do you guys think? I think this deck is really, really strong. I think you guys should expect to see it in competitive BTM and play. And, you know, if you want to pick it up yourself, give it a try. It's a very cheap deck. It's actually a super budget, so I do recommend giving it a try. If for nothing else, a good fun time. Well, let me know what you think in the comments. Have you played Beat 7 Jetsmon? Have you played the same deck, similar deck, different cards? Let me know. And we're out of here, guys. See you later.